Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel, thank you for clicking on another video. In this video I'm going to be doing a get ready with me and um, showing you this makeup look, although to be honest it's really not about this makeup look because I just want to talk to you guys and I don't know why, I just feel more relaxed chatting to a camera while doing my makeup. Probably going to regret this when editing it and I see that halfway through the conversation I'm sat there with one eyebrow on, a load of powder on my face, looking a hot mess but still talking. <laughs> I love a bit of dialogue, I love a bit of dialogue so yeah if you want to see kind of how I achieved this makeup look I guess a little bit um but more importantly if you want to just chat then yeah keep watching this video give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend if you would like to invite them to you know join the conversation too I love talking <laughs> and part of talking is listening so please comment freely and kindly and yeah hello <laughs> Voice. Am I ill? I'm not ill. I'm just in today's video, I wanted to talk about beauty standards and colorism and racism. And you might be like, why, Sarah? Why? Why do you want to talk about that? Good question. I would say what has set this off or what has kind of really made me aware of how much I want to talk about this was that I watched a video by this girl called Ashley. She's a really amazing YouTuber. Her channel is Best Dressed and she did a video about Eurocentric beauty standards and how she's kind of learned to love herself. I watched her video. It's kind of x-rated. I know that my channel is very much PG so just be aware if you're going to check her out. I watched her video and it was so interesting. As I watched it, I felt heard, <laughs> which makes no sense because we have kind of really different backgrounds and experiences, I guess, but it was just kind of, it was really awesome to, to hear and, and to understand more of what I already understood, if that makes sense. And so after I watched that video, I posted a story on my Instagram and opened out the conversation even more to you guys and just shared what I was feeling and really got in my feels. And you guys shared stuff back. It was a really important conversation. I feel like it's helped me. And I didn't want to stop that conversation there. I was actually chatting to my sister and just saying, how do, how do I open up dialogue more? And she was like, yeah, how do we do this? And I was like, I don't know. So I guess I'm just gonna start by making a YouTube video about it. It is very hot in here. I have a Sula, which is a sweaty upper lip alert. Hashtag wild child. So I apologize for that. I've actually written notes that I remember where I want to go because I know that I have a tendency of just talking at you guys and not really having much structure. So hopefully this will make sense. So I just want to say, first of all, that everyone's welcome in this conversation. Like no matter where you're from, no matter your background, your race, your heritage, like you're welcome here in this conversation. I actually truly believe that like everyone needs to sit at the table to both listen and to be heard. And so yeah, you might have a very different background or experience to me. You might have no idea what colorism even is. Is. and even more reason why I'd love you to stick around if there's specific points or things that I say and you're like oh I want to comment on that then just tag the time or, or reference it um, and yeah I just really want to chat I want this to be a two-way thing as well because I am also here to learn and to better understand and grow as I was about to film this video literally just now as I was making my iced coffee I started like panicking I was like I've literally been planning this video in my mind about a week now going over what I'd want to say and getting so excited for it but I started panicking like crap what if this video just doesn't go down well what if I just end up making people feel alienated or making kind of you know some of my white viewers feel like oh can't relate leave the chat you know that's not what I want to achieve that's so not what I want and then I wasn't gonna film it and I don't know how I concluded to film it I think I was just like Sarah stop being a wimp and just do it like just do it you really want to do this so stop panicking I'm not entirely sure why I'm doing this as a get ready with me in fact that's a lie the reason I'm doing this as a get ready with me is because I don't it just feels less intense like if I'm doing my makeup I feel more relaxed you have something unfortunately to laugh at <laughs> so that's the reason why it's a get ready with me and I was about to get ready anyway so I thought I'd just chat and I don't know why it just makes me feel more relaxed so yeah pop the kettle on make yourself a cuppa or an iced coffee or whatever um, and let's get into the video another thing that I wanted to say before we get started is <laughs> that a reason why I feared doing this video was I didn't want to be accused of playing the race card which is something I've been thinking about recently. I've been talking about racism more with my close friends, you know, just 
being honest and talking about experiences more. But for a long time, I have been very reluctant to talk about racism. And I'm almost embarrassed to say that. And the reason is because you just see and hear people getting accused of playing the race card. Like say if there's a video, for example, on Facebook going around about someone talking about the racism they've experienced, there'll be a comment probably with 300 thumbs up, like oh, tired of people always playing the race card. I'm trying to say this and, and, and not laugh because there is no such thing as a race card in my experience. What the race card as it's presented to be is kind of like the trump card, the winning card. For example, if you're having an argument with your mum, you know, can't relate, Nigerian. <laughs> but yeah, if you're having an argument with your mum and then she says, I carried you for nine months. Trump card, you know, beats everything else, argument over, she's won. So it's kind of suggestive that by mentioning racism, you are playing a card that will get you benefits or um, cause you to win something or, or, or belittle someone else's point. And actually, in my experience, every time I've mentioned racism, I've had three responses. About 10, maybe 15% of the time, I've seen a reduction in the amount of racism that I was experiencing. About, <laughs> I'd say about 20% of the time, I've seen an increase in the amount of racism that I was experiencing. Um, and probably about 70% of the time, so the majority of the time, I just see everyone become uncomfortable, which is not my goal, is not what I'm here for. No one wants to see anyone be uncomfortable. What I haven't seen is like a win or some like massive race card. Yeah, I don't know what, I got the job or something. I've never really experienced that. Um, and actually, you might say the reduction in racism experienced as a win, but I, I see that as, as just minimum, minimum, real minimum. <laughs> shouldn't be, you know, the racism shouldn't be there in the first place. So yeah, um, this isn't to play the race card. I can't play the race card because the race card does not exist for me. I'm just being very honest in this video. So please don't feel like I'm playing the race card and please don't mention that in future because it doesn't exist. It's almost like someone, for example, racism is bad just like domestic abuse is bad it's like someone telling you they experienced domestic abuse and you say oh you're just playing the domestic abuse card and it's like what what card <laughs> what card is this domestic abuse card and what why is that relevant and it's often used as something to shut someone down from telling their story so if you've ever told someone not to play the race card i'd suggest that you don't do that because you might want to question why you're doing that do you are you uncomfortable you're just trying to stop them from speaking what they've experienced um that's not cool, so. I guess that introduction was kind of like the primer, so I'm just gonna prime my face, otherwise I'll never actually do my makeup. And then I'll move on to the foundation. So I am a firm believer that actually life is like, we all start with a certain perspective. We have a very niche, narrow perspective of the world based on who we were born to, where we were born, what we experience. And as we go through life and meet other people, we can just gradually, say if this is the central point and we're all born on random points around that, we can gradually widen our view of life, like our life view and learn more. So I am happy to admit that I was born with a certain niche perspective that has obviously helped form my worldview and my understanding of life. Um, and by God's grace, I believe I'm, you know, trying to open that out, trying to learn more listen more etc for that reason i think it's really important that you know what my background is and of the foundation to the life that i've lived and experienced so far i am the youngest of five and um, i was born to nigerian parents so as far as i know when i've asked my mum about our history i'm 100 percent nigerian i was born in surrey so my parents moved over to the uk i was born in south of england surrey when i was about three years old they moved to or we moved to the valleys of south wales and that is where i grew up i grew up welsh english and um, british also nigerian i also want to clarify as well that if you were to ask me about my childhood i would say i had a really happy childhood i'm so grateful to god um, i even once asked my friend like am i just really lucky in life or am i just really grateful <laughs> she was like um i think you're just really grateful and i was like do you know what? I think that's even better. If I'm just really grateful, then it means that, you know, no matter what's going on, I'll always be happy. The world will be burning around me. I'm like, I'm just so grateful to be here. Um, but yeah, I would genuinely say I had, a, I had a happy childhood. I'm really grateful to God. Like, we weren't very rich. We 
probably you know quite poor so grateful to my parents they were so loving and people around us were loving too people around us were loving and kind and this video is gonna make it sound bad because that's whatever that's what happens when you put a magnifying glass on something you, when you look at something closely but I want to liken this to the bit of poo in the cup of water analogy so you know the analogy of that um, a waiter brings you water at a restaurant and there's just a tiny bit of poo in there and you're like oh can you I don't I don't want the poo in there can you take that out and they're like oh but the rest of it is all water most of it is good and it's like yeah, I appreciate like definitely most of this water is so fresh, so good. But actually that little bit of poo in there really does make a difference. Um, so when I talk about the experiences that I've had um, growing up, the racist experiences, that those are the, that's just the little bit of poo. The rest of the water, amazing. Like most people were so nice and so loving. But sometimes you do just have to draw attention to the bit of poo in your glass because it is not nice being forced to drink it. So... <laughs> in South Wales, um, where I grew up, specifically in the valleys at that time, there weren't many black people. I'm still pretty sure that there aren't. I think there are more than there used to be. But we were basically <laughs> the black family. And um, there weren't many, there weren't, it was mainly white Welsh people basically. There weren't, there was not a lot of multiculturalism in the valleys where I grew up. We very much stood out. Uh, we were the black family to a certain extent. And my mum was always super intentional um, to make us love ourselves. Like, ugh, I am just the biggest fan of my mum. Like, she inspires me so much. Like, she would buy us books with characters in it who looked like us. So, like, books about our hair and our hair texture and about our skin colour. And just saying, like, we're beautiful the way we are. And we used to love those books. And so, even though I'm about to tell the stories I'm about to tell, I never had an issue with loving who I was I knew that I was like I'm exactly the way I'm supposed to be there's nothing like other people are white I'm brown like there was nothing wrong with that and um, so my mum just created this like crazy good foundation that I pray that I can pass on to my future children and she even got us like brown dolls so you know when you get dolls in school and stuff she made sure she bought us some brown ones and um, in fact most of them were brown because she was just like she wanted us to know that babies come in brown too that you are not abnormal and um, that you just live in a society where there aren't many people like you around but you are normal and you are valuable the way that you are in fact I think it was recently maybe like a year ago she was telling me that um I mentioned that and she said oh th <laughs> that she actually had to argue to get a brown doll in stock and made she was like why are there no brown dolls why why are all the dolls white? and I had a brown baby born and I loved her I loved her <laughs> that's kind of how my mum raised us she was very much very reassuring and very loving in that way the school I went to was a catholic school it wasn't very diverse but it preached love which I did notice you did notice that like being kind picking someone up when they fall over in the playground it was on this pedestal I, I really do think that made a difference looking back I think that the the ethos of the school what well, you could feel it you could feel that people wanted to be kind and loving and Christ-like. So of course, not everyone who went there was Christian, not everyone who went there was Catholic. There was another ethnic minority growing up. So there was another family from Bangladesh. I was best friends with um, the girl, she was in my year. And sometimes people would think we were cousins. You know, obviously, Nigerian, Bangladesh, cousins. <laughs> um, but that is kind of how diverse it was. I believe there was another East Asian girl as well. And then apart from that, it was mainly, that was in my primary school and apart from that, mainly white Welsh people, as I guess you'd expect in the valleys of South Wales. We did experience racism and plenty of it. One example was when we would be waiting for the bus. Um, a different school bus would drive past us um, and they would spit on us. Um, so as we were waiting at the bus stop, um, the kids would spit out of the window at us and shout the N-word at the window at us um, as we were stood there with my mum. Um, so that sucked. That was pretty crap. Um, other experiences we had were that I couldn't play in the local park um, because if we went to play in the park and um, the kids would throw stones at us and call us the n-word and spit on us and it wasn't like a one-off it was literally every time you went to the park so I remember <sighs> I remember going back and being like oh, I really hope those kids aren't there then they could see you because the way it was the park was like below and the houses were above so they could like see you and then they would come out and throw stones at you and then we'd be like okay we gotta go home now and so yeah that was really horrible like for example there was a shop further down and you could get to it by walking through the park and it would be a nice shortcut well lit safe or there was a longer route around um which was dark and kind of by the main road but i would go on the longer route just because i didn't want to just like didn't want to have stones thrown at me and like 
be spat on and stuff when going to the shop um so yeah there was a lot of racism i remember when we went on a holiday camp in the south was it cornwall in england or something and me and my sister were playing on the swings um me and my sister came out we were playing on the swings and some kid came and just like two boys they came and just pushed us off the swings physically and they were like stupid n-words um calling us monkeys by the way i don't say the n-word i never say the n-word i i think it's a disgusting word that should be left in the depth of history books and um, i won't even say it when i'm singing along to songs i don't appreciate being called it by other black people i will not call another black person the n-word so just to let you know that's why i'm not saying it um, i think it's a really disgusting word but anyway so yeah they like pushed us off the swings and i remember us going home and telling my mum. actually i think kimma fought back that time and we pushed them back and she's like no we're not leaving but they were boys and they were stronger than us so we left um so yeah there was a lot of there were so many i just keep remembering them so there's another time when i was sat with my friends um we were just hanging out i say my friends i don't think we were really that close like it was it was a weird mixed bag like there was a time when we had loads of friends in our neighborhood and it was amazing it was so much fun and then things changed and people hated it. not people hated us but things just changed and there wasn't so much love anymore and um, anyway there was this one time when i was sat on the just sat on the pavement as you do with your mates hanging out and this boy rode past and shouted out dirty n words on his bike and these were all kids by the way these were all kids um which is really just terrifying like where did like i didn't even know the n word until i was taught until i was taught it by someone calling it to me like where did they learn that stuff but anyway so he cycled past and he shouted that at me and then my friend was like i'm not an n word and i was like <laughs> so that was another experience um and then yeah so then that was like childhood etc sometimes i think we my mum mentioned that we had like school buses that sometimes it would just drive past us and not pick us up when we're clearly there in the u uniform and so she had to go up and be like hey why did you drive past us and, and things like that also by the way i'm being very careful only to tell you about the really overt episodes of racism so the subtle racism like applying for jobs and never getting any literally never getting a job until i started applying outside of the valleys no matter how <laughs> even when i had like 10 stars on my on my cv like i'm so qualified to run your shop till but i won't get the job and um, so little things like that um, that people will say oh that wasn't racism that was just coincidence i'm not even going to mention those little things but yeah i'm just mentioning the really overt ones so yeah that was my childhood again overall i loved my childhood we went to a really lovely church there were so many loving people and if any of those people are watching this video thank you thanks for being kind and loving to me and my family and just thanks for being a normal person <laughs> to me <laughs> sorry i thought i'd just do a little bit more of my makeup because otherwise we're never gonna get it done and um, so then we move on to teenagehood so teenagehood i mean like 12 13 14 the little the awkward stage where you're know, definitely not cute anymore but you're definitely not quite popping like puberty hasn't although i did have my puberty very early but i hated it i remember getting boobs really quickly and being like why are you in the way of my athletics <laughs> so young so naive when i was like 13 ish i remember there was a time when i was like hanging around my friends at the shop just getting some sweets getting some food it's just the shop like down from my church um and there were these guys that my friends fancied um i didn't really know them we didn't really know them. we we're just kind of hanging around them you know that awkward oh so awkward praise the lord for adulthood so glad i don't have to go through that anymore so we we're just kind of hanging around them and we were all in the shop then the guys left the shop my friends were leaving the shop and i was just kind of trailing behind and as i was leaving i kind of heard the guys outside talking about me i don't really know what they're saying you know when you don't remember the whole memory but you definitely remember how you feel and you definitely remember certain words and he was just said effing dirty n-word about me um and i i kind of stuttered i didn't want to leave the shop then because i was like oh this is really awkward none of my friends <laughs> said anything um and i just felt like crap i felt like crap i don't actually know what i did i can't remember what i did i feel like i stayed because it was a little bit far from home i feel like i stayed and we just carried on hanging out and i just knew that they hated me and i didn't really um speak in the conversation i just kind of sat on the outside of the conversation and no one no one ever said anything um <laughs> funnily enough the guy who said that um i don't want to get emotional because this makes me like
Okay. Um, I don't know why I, I um, the, it's, it's like the memories don't make me emotional. It's more like when you just see how life works that sometimes it's a bit like, why is it so crap? Um, so yeah, one of the, the guy who said that, I remember his face like clear as day. And I remember, you know, when they did the MTV show, The Valleys, <laughs> he was one of the guys on there. He was one of the twins. I remember someone saying, have you watched the show, The Valleys? And so I like, watched the trailer. It was a bit of a crazy show anyway, which by the way, wasn't definitely was an inaccurate representation of what it was like growing up in the valleys but um it was a bit of a crazy show which i didn't watch anyway but i just saw his face and i was just like i was just like how is that life how is that how is that how life works that like i was like you made me like you were so racist you made me feel like crap like you were like and and now you're a tv star um but anyway <laughs> But anyway, um, yeah, I guess that was that. Um, cool. So yeah, that was kind of teenage-ish hood. And then um, I moved schools. I moved schools in year nine and I went to a school in Cardiff. I got a scholarship to a private school um, and it was completely different. It was a different experience. It wasn't Catholic. Um, so that was different, actually. I did notice that difference. Um, but it was just multicultural. They were like, there were kids from all over the world in that school. And I can't even describe it. Like, don't get me wrong. I had friends, like, I had some friends in my other school. But it was just like breathing a, a sigh of relief. Like, not to be the black one or the one. Like, just to just blend in and be anonymous. Like, it wasn't a feeling I was used to. It was like, everyone's different here. <laughs> I'm not the only... I'm not the only different person um, so I really liked that about my school um, so yeah I had friends and literally our friendship group was like a poster advert for multiculturalism friends from different backgrounds was really good and really awesome then I started to learn this new thing apart from racism which was called colorism now I'm gonna tell a few stories on colorism but here is the only memory I have when I thought about my skin tones so there was a time when me and my sisters Kim and Yama we had read a book I think and they were describing the deep dark skin of the girl and how beautiful it was again shout out to my mum for books which affirm us <laughs> um and I remember we were like oh my skin is darker than yours and we were comparing whose skin was darker because we wanted dark skin and that was it and it wasn't deep it wasn't my mum didn't comment on it no one like we never really thought or talked about it again it was just like oh who's got like it was really random and playful and that's the only memory that I have where I thought about the tone of my skin or the shade of my skin aside from the fact that I knew that I was black if you get what I mean um so yeah I joined this new school one of the girls there such a lovely girl and she's just telling a story about um a guy that she knew and she describes him as blick um and i was i was still very new to the school at this point um and i was just confused and i was like what's blick and she was like you know when someone's like proper dark skin like really dark skin like blick like and the way she was saying it was really negative like blick and i was just like i was just like oh like what i was just confused i, I remember feeling confused and then she, I was just carried on listening to the story and she was, as she was telling it, I was like, I looked at my skin and looked at his and this girl, she was just darker skinned than me. Not something I'd noticed again because she was, by the way, she was of African origin. And um, so I was just, I just remember feeling like I, all I thought was, oh, there's another black girl. I had never thought to think she's darker skinned than me. And I don't like the, I don't know what it is, but I don't like the way that she's using the word blick. I don't like that word. I don't see why it's necessary. He's 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 black. Carry on. Why is that a point to stress? <laughs> that was that. And then there was another time, as I told you that I went to church or I go to church, and my local church loved it. We would do parties again. So many amazing people who loved us, who we loved. So just to put that in there, I'm just talking about the tiny bit of poo in the glass, not the whole, not the whole glass. Um so yeah we went to church one day and there was a party there now at this point there were loads of students in the church so even though i grew up in the valleys and um, there's a university there which has loads of international students and um, which is amazing they're super you know i guess universities in general love international students because they charge them higher fees <laughs> as we all know um 
and so yeah there was a lot of diversity from that so there were a lot of say like 18 to 30 year old people from all over the world in this church and i remember we were at one of the church parties and i was chilling with my sister loving life drinking our drinking our kool-aid we didn't have kool-aid i don't know drinking our pop loving life um and one of the girls one of the students who was i believe black portuguese came up to me came up to us me and my sister kimmer and she grabbed my skin like this <laughs> And she said, why are you, why is your skin so much darker than your sister's? And why is your nose so much bigger? And I just remember like sitting by Kim and just, just kind of like, oh my, I guess my skin is a little bit darker. I didn't say this, but I was thinking that and I guess my nose is a little bit bigger. And um, we just kind of ignored her and carried on with the party. But I remember feeling bad. I remember feeling bad. It was never something I had noticed before. I'd thought it was a thing before. And then I went home. I remember like looking... <laughs> looking in the mirror and like pinching my nose and being like should my nose be smaller like would I be more would I be better if my nose was smaller and like looking at my sister and thinking oh her nose is smaller like why is mine bigger and then just looking at the shade of my skin and thinking oh I guess it is slightly darker like like <laughs> again brushed it off moved on didn't dwell on it Um, the nose the nose comment I got over that later on um i feel like maybe i'll do a different video on that but basically one day i just looked in the mirror at my nose and i was like do i dislike my nose <laughs> it's gonna sound so bad or so weird but i was just like no i don't this was when i realized that actually society dictates beauty standards but society is made up of us which means that i dictate my own beauty standards <laughs> so i'd one day just looked in the mirror and was like I genuinely don't have a problem with my nose. It looks like my mum's. It looks like my dad's. It smiles when I smile. I can breathe easy through these nostrils. I like my bridge. It's I genuinely don't have a problem with my nose. And I'm not going to let society put their issue on me. Like, I'm going to... So, so that was how I got around that. But anyway, so that was one experience. That was my second experience of colourism. And it was just as baffling as the first. Um, and then... And then we went to this Christian conference, this Nigerian Christian conference, which was amazing. It was kind of mine and my siblings' first experience. I think I was probably about 13. So even though I was from, I'm from Nigeria, I only went to Nigeria for the first time in 2014. Um, due to financial reasons, due to just, you know, life, um, which is a shame, but, you know, life happens. So this was my first kind of experience of being around loads of people who are from where you're from, who get it, you know, you say about parent stuff and they just get it they understand because they've been through the same kind of life experience as you and I remember just being like wow this is amazing making lots of friends well no we didn't really didn't make that many friends we weren't that cool <laughs> but we made a few friends we made a few friends generally it was overall a really positive experience and I still um go to that conference oh I just put this brush in shadow and my oh sorry I'm focusing so much on talking that my makeup is really just kind of a non-issue right now but yeah went to this conference most most things perfect great nice <laughs> but what we found was that a few very vocal black guys saying really nasty things about black girls specifically dark skin girls there was one particular guy who used to tweet <laughs> Uh, my sister would read them more so she could probably quote them to you i personally am not one for negative energy if i see something that's negative i'm like bye bye see you never because i don't like the way you make me feel <laughs> which is both a good thing and a bad thing um but yeah so this guy would tweet things about black girls and dark skinned girls and she told me one recently that he had tweeted like where the black where the dark skinned girls sit in school and he calls it the valley of the shadow of death or something and just such, basically just saying that dark skin girls were ugly, just horrible, horrible things. That kind of sentiment of idolising light skinned girls or lighter black complexions and talking badly of darker complexions. We were so baffled. I remember me and my sisters, we got home, we were just like, what, what, what is this? What, what is this colour or something? Like, what is going on? Why? Like, we were so pleased to just be like, yeah, we're, we're around lots of people who are like us and who get us, you know, which is, I have lots of white friends too, love them too, but it was just a different experience. We loved it. And suddenly we were being separated again. We we're being separated into lighter skin, darker skin. It's like, what the heck is going on? Like, what is, like, what are we doing here and it was so baffling and confusing sorry there's this bit of my necklace that i actually don't like so i just push it to the back i should take it off but i don't know i tried and i couldn't so yeah it was super baffling um <laughs> very baffling um 
but we kind of just got over it and decided i don't know I, I i guess we just decided it wasn't our problem like i never had a problem with the shade of my skin before why would i start now like i i still and the funniest thing is i still don't know if i'm light skin or dark skin because guess what it changes depending on who i stand next to <laughs> if i'm next to someone who is of mixed heritage complexion i'm dark skin if i'm next to someone who is darker than me i'm lighter skin i just don't care i don't care i'm black i'm nigerian i just i literally don't care what tone camp i fit into like when people are like teen light skin teen dark skin what 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 are you talking about what are you talking about like i changed like i remember i'd see some guy there was this guy who was light skinned and he i think he had it in his bio like light skin something i just like what what is i just i i just find it so unattractive to be honest like i just i anyway the baffle the bewilderment is still present as you can see so that happened we realized that within the black community there were issues issues that we hadn't experienced because our wonderful my blessed god bless them parents had not raised us in that to, to to think like that it had never been a thing and then suddenly when we were like yeah with we're, we're with our people suddenly it was like wait we are do our people have issues because it seems like we have issues and i'm just going to say that because it because we because there's an issue sorry there's an issue of colorism colorism is like the grandson of racism and it is just as ugly it is just as ugly and it has no place no place anyway moving on so then we get to university i went to university in birmingham loved it great experience um and there were just little things that happened again i'm not going to go into these kind of things i had a friend who was nigerian also um, and one time i noticed that he was using skin lightening cream and um, so like body cream it's like rubbing cream on his hands in it and i just noticed that the bot the bottle said that it lightens your skin and i was like why are you using this like why i was i was just like why are you using this and he was like oh it's just the one that my mum bought me and i was like i was so shocked and baffled he had beautiful skin and i never even thought that of <laughs> him being darker i know it almost sounds like people saying i don't see color but i obviously i could see his skin tone but i'd never and i'd never put that together with he is darker or he is dark um and so i threw it in the bin <laughs> i threw the i threw the skin lightening cream um or the body lotion i don't even know if it worked it was like it was it looked like a really mild just lotion that just advertised itself as lighter rather than like a full-on bleaching skin thing threw it in the bin i threw it in the bin and bought him some cocoa butter um so then we come to now post-grad sarah what is post-grad sarah's life like honestly by god's grace a lot better i don't experience people don't shout the n-word at me as i wait for the bus people don't spit at me <laughs> um people don't call me the n-word to my face grateful for that <laughs> whether they do behind my back i don't know don't care well do care but not my problem to worry about plenty of other things to worry about just going for dinner with my friend oh, let me just let me just do my eyebrows because my makeup's not going well mm, kind of hate the brows but what are we gonna do about it okay so i was at dinner with my friend who is light-skinned nigerian you would you might think she's mixed race and we were just talking about life we're talking about guys love a girl chat and um, and just sharing our experiences and like current activities <laughs> or lack of activity um and it was just heartbreaking to hear of the similar experiences that she had had on a different side of the country um, with colorism, her even being lighter skinned. So it seems that there's actually quite a lot of kind of colorism within the dating scene. Um, another experience I've had was with a mixed race friend actually telling me that she doesn't um, like black guys. Um, and she would tell me this a, a, a lot, quite a lot. And I would kind of ignore it because I really hated it, but I would just ignore it. Um, until one day she said that um, the reason she didn't, one of the reasons she didn't like black guys was because of just like how wide their noses are. And I was like, you mean like mine? Or like my brothers? Or my dad's? Or my future kids? <laughs> and I was so hurt. And so, um, I was so hurt. 
so so hurt because there's a difference between having a preference and hating something and speaking badly of it for example i personally prefer chocolate fudge cake for dessert than t sticky toffee pudding however if you order the sticky toffee pudding i'm not going to speak badly about it i'm not going to call people around come listen everything i hate about sticky toffee pudding because my like of chocolate fudge cake is genuinely a preference and there's a difference between preference and active hate if you're speaking down about something that's not a preference that's an active hate that's an that's a deeply rooted issue for you to use your energy to use your breath to talk down about a specific race whether you cover it up with dating or whatever romantic preference you want to cover it up with if you speak down about a whole race that's racist that that's based in racism and i'm so tired of hearing people say oh it's just my preference preferences don't come out like that that's how hate comes out preferences don't that's not how preferences appear preference is just an enjoyment of something you'll you'll speak well of something when you speak down about something that is no longer preference that that is a specific hate um i've had friends or have friends um nigerian female friends who tell me why they would never marry a nigerian guy and i'm like <laughs> again just kind of don't want to be problematic let it wash over you but just not even saying why they do like another race but just talking down about nigerians and um, and as to hear a nigerian person talk down about nigerian males is really baffling because you are literally a, a nigerian male you're like one chromosome away as we hear from being a nigerian male like it's it really is that simple and actually you're speaking badly about me you're speaking badly about my brothers about my dad about my uncles about my future sons like that's that's not okay if you have a preference you can marry who you want you can be with who you want but don't speak badly about people because of their skin tone or because of their race that is racist i think it goes without saying that like when you are meeting people and dating people and um, there's obviously a tendency that if someone has a certain background they might be of a certain world view I've been raised with a pretty modern feminist worldview that I believe I can work a job, I believe that I can earn a living, and while I might choose to one day quit my job and make food for the rest of my life, I don't have to. <laughs> um, I can choose what I want to do with my life. Whereas if I meet someone from a more traditional background um, who has been raised with very specific gender roles in a marriage, we might not be very compatible. But actually, that compatibility is not limited by someone's race. People come in all different skin colours in terms of you can have someone who loves hip-hop, who loves R&B, who loves spicy food and they can be the palest of pale people. You can have someone who thinks Monster Munch is spicy and they might be of African origin. Once you start judging someone in advance by their race, that's when we get to, to racism and I'm just not here for that. I'm really not here for that. I'm quite tired of sitting around and hearing these things and, and it's really, really hurtful when I hear someone speak badly um, about black people in that way. I find it so painful and, it, and it, it's similar to the pain of the racism that I had growing up, but it's different, especially when it comes from another black person, because it's not only painful, it's sad. It's sad and it's ignorant. It's like this inferiority complex. It's like an inferior, a misplaced inferiority complex. You think that you're hating on black guys for the width of their nose, but actually you're, you're hating on yourself, that you have black DNA in you, you're, you're hating on yourself. You think that you just don't like Nigerian guys, but you're talking badly publicly about your people. Your, your words have an effect and they affect you. It, it's just the most twisted, bizarre form of self-hate. And part of me almost feels sorry for the people who express that because I feel like we, we are often a result of our circumstances and you know it's, it's it's true this is centuries of conditioning for centuries now we have seen the beautiful princesses the beautiful um, people in the rom-coms and um, being a light-skinned woman we've seen the beautiful people the the amazing man the princes being a light-skinned man so i'm not saying that these views aren't rooted in history i'm not saying that you know it wasn't taught we weren't taught to hate ourselves this comes from the slave trade it comes from being told that you are a lesser citizen I guess it's just sad to see the way it plays out in today's modern society where we have freedom, where we have options, where, you know, people are actively standing up against racism. It's sad to see some people still cling to that inferiority complex and speak it out. Not only not only think it, but to speak it out, I think, takes a certain and whole nother level of um, belief in what you're saying. And, and I just find it sad. I find it sad that as black people judge each other by the colour of our skin. It's like the weirdest thing to say. And yet it's true. I have black friends who judge 
other people who judge the guys they will date by the color of their skin and i find that so sad my makeup is not really going that well because i keep just pausing to talk and forgetting to do it so i'm just gonna do some eyeshadow i kind of want to go for like a neutral orange autumn-y oh how funny i've never used this palette <laughs> i was like why wouldn't that open it's because i've literally never used it oh do you know what? there's a reason why no one has time for that i'll use this other one i try to have wisdom in how i speak and it's just so important to know where we're from and to know our history because you know they say like how can you know where you're going if you don't know where you've come from well i'd go so far as to say how can you know where you are if you don't know where you've come from you know the things that have happened in the past have shaped the society that we live in it has shaped who we are and what we believe and 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 how we see the world and um, so yeah just knowing history i think is important in recognizing things that aren't just coincidences you know and therefore being more intentional i guess about the way that we speak um, and more considerate about the way that we speak i just want to make it clear that i don't hate anyone i don't have unforgiveness in my heart i think sometimes there's still um a little bit of hurt which is just normal um and i guess takes more time not to feel that hurt anymore when you reflect on things but i forgive people i forgive everyone for people i haven't known people don't know what they do we're all learning we're all growing if you are watching this and <laughs> i don't know you're you're racist or you've been racist in the past or colorist or something and um, thank you for listening number one i know that takes something um and also just to like you know leave me your thoughts leave me your thoughts on where you're at um i just feel like mostly we all want the same thing <laughs> we all want the same thing um we always just need more understanding and more love um, why do i do my mascara first i always do that and I clearly should do it after the liner. I think it really is interesting to see how our beauty standards are so often biased towards different races. So I finished doing my hair and my makeup, kind of. I never really finished, I kind of just quit. <laughs> just quit trying um so yeah um i think i'm gonna end the video there because i feel like i've said most of what i had wanted to say or planned to say um i'd love to hear your thoughts i'd love to hear your experiences um if you disagree with me but by the way if, like i've said a lot of things <laughs> you are more than welcome to disagree with me um i'm always so grateful and so uh, so grateful for how you guys always choose kindness and you always choose to seek to understand um and that's how i'll respond you could completely disagree or just have so many different thoughts and i want to hear them and i want to seek to understand i want to seek kindness and i want dialogue and i want to learn from you and um, so yeah any thoughts and experiences i would love to hear please feel free to share them i know that we all have very different experiences <laughs> in this life and um that's what makes it beautiful really you know when we can be different but still love each other. I quite like my makeup look today, you guys. I like it. Wow, that feels good. Normally at the end of these videos, I'm like, I hate my face <laughs> or oh, I hate my makeup. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to share it with a friend if you feel like you want to invite more people to join this conversation and definitely subscribe for more videos. If you want to see more videos on topics like these where we just sit down and chat about life issues, about things that really do affect us, um, then please let me know and I will definitely film more for you guys. Thank you so much for being my internet friends. I will see you in my next video. Bye.